Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the best settings that you can use on your Anycubic Cobra 3 and Cobra 3 combo. So if you're having problems with bed adhesion or layer lines or stringing, issues with the multicolor printing and colors running and things like that, or you just wanna get the best possible quality prints that you can get off of the Cobra 3, I'm gonna be going over all of my personal settings that I use to get these quality prints. And I'm gonna kinda of divide this video up into three different sections. The first is the actual printer calibration settings itself. The second is the slicer settings that I use on my computer to slice the files and three the multicolor printing when it comes to purging and flushing the colors and stuff like that so without wasting any more time let's jump into the video okay so for the first part of the video we're going to be going over calibrating the cobra 3. now if you go ahead and turn on your cobra 3 scroll over to the adjust tab and then click all the way over to the right and it'll say calibration this is where you'll find your three main calibration settings that you can do so the first calibration is auto leveling and this is pretty self-explanatory most 3d printers have it nowadays this will auto level the bed of your cobra 3. there are are 25 separate points on the build plate and it will go ahead and adjust the Z offset for each and every one of those points so that way your entire print sticks to the bed plate and there's no point on the build plate that is too close or too far away from the nozzle itself. This is especially useful if you're having any sort of build plate adhesion issues or problems with layer lines being shifty and stuff like that. Right underneath that you will see vibration compensation and what this does it'll actually move the entire tool head itself on the X axis extremely fast and shake to kind of see how much vibration it's going to cause when it's moving that fast and also the build plate itself the y axis is going to go forward and backwards extremely fast to kind of see if the table or shelf that the 3d printer is on can handle as much vibration as it's giving it'll also adjust so that way any shaking that the bed or the x-axis does while it's printing extremely fast does not affect the actual quality of the model and the third setting is the pid calibration now pretty much what this does is it sort of maintains and stabilizes the temperature of the nozzle in the print bed just because it's not an enclosed printer and sometimes there's different temperatures that'll come about whether it's like a ceiling fan or anything else that's in the room this will make sure that anything that can disrupt the temperature of the nozzle and the print bed are not interrupted by things in the environment and also a real quick general maintenance that you should always do with your printer is make sure that the printer and ace pro if you have one are on the latest firmware just that way any bugs or problems that the software had beforehand are solved and up to date and make sure that your printer is clean make sure that the bed plate is always clean and free from like oil from your fingers or anything like that and apply a small amount of grease to the x y and z axis every 300 hours of printing or so just so that way you know that the entire printer is going to run smooth and not have any issues okay so now that we've gone over the printer calibration settings let's head over to the computer so that way i can show you guys the best settings that i use on my slicer Okay, so we are now on the computer and the slicer that I am using is Anycubic Slicer Next. And this is pretty much Anycubic's port of Orca. And I actually really like this slicer. It's a lot better than the previous Anycubic Slicer, which was just their basic slicer. And it kind of looked a little bit similar to this, except a lot of the tools didn't work. The painting tool was absolutely garbage. There wasn't even like the ability to adjust the fill angle and stuff like that. So it was really hard to color in objects. And the remote print was pretty much useless. So. Anycubic Slicer next is the best slicer for your Anycubic Cobra 3. And if you look over to the left, this is all of the settings over here that I have. So first things first, we have the quality tab and pretty much everything here is part of the 0.16 millimeter template, but I have adjusted a few things and I will just scroll through it and just that way you guys can see everything. And if something's very important that I change specifically, I will let you guys know. So here are the layer heights and layer widths. Everything else is pretty standard. I always move the seam position to the back just because I don't want it showing up on the front face of the print, but you can always adjust it to a random if it's a large print or you could even put it at a certain angle. But yeah, that's something that you can always adjust. Scrolling through the rest of the settings, the next one that I want to talk about is iron. Learning. I always leave this off. I don't know why, but for some reason, any of these options that I use for any of my prints when there's a flat surface does not work out. So I just leave the ironing off and it actually turns out a lot better than with it. Next one I want to talk about is walls printing order. Now this one I actually have as inner, outer, inner, which as you guys can read that large paragraph in the middle says that it gives you the best external surface finish. And pretty much it's just the sequence in which it prints off each and every layer. It starts off on the inside then works to the outside and then back to the inside. And it kind of, it takes a little bit longer, but it definitely shows. I'm not exactly sure everything. I don't, I'm not a G code 
professional, but it definitely gives off a lot better quality print from what I have noticed. And it's a lot smoother and fuller looking, if that makes sense. You don't see as much infill lines bleeding through or anything like that if it's something small. So yeah, that's another setting that I like. And here is the rest of the quality settings. Pretty standard stuff. I don't mess with a lot of the normal settings. Next up, we have the strength tab. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the wall loops. Always keep this at three. This will make sure that your outside layer of your prints is always strong and doesn't have any of the infill marks bleeding through. I don't know why, but for some reason, it doesn't happen as much anymore. But back then I used to have a lot of, let's say I used the gyroid infill. You could see it. You could see where the infill was just from looking on the outside of the print, especially if it was like a silk filament. So I just keep this at three. It's, it, it's nice, it doesn't take too much longer, and it just gives you another extra layer before the infill starts. Top and bottom shelves, I think a lot of this is customized. Um, I use the monotonic line for the top surface, and then the bottom is monotonic, uh, not monotonic line. This is a personal preference, and it works out the best for me. Top and bottom shelves, six, always. That's just a thing that I've done since I started 3D printing. Moving on, we go down to the infill. Again, this is all personal preference stuff that you can adjust depending on the model and what geometric shapes work for you. Gyroid to me always seems to be the strongest, but there's so many different ones that you can try depending on the type of model and what different tolerances you have to look for and stuff like that. But generally speaking, this is pretty much what I keep it at. I increase the infill if I need to. If not, this is pretty much what I keep it at. Moving our way on down to advanced, everything here is pretty much left alone. Going over to the speed tab, we have first layer speed. And I'm pretty sure I did not adjust anything on the speed. It's pretty fast. It prints off stuff super, super quick. If you guys tried the 12 minute Benchy, the Cobra 3 is incredibly fast and I don't need to adjust any of the speed settings to make anything faster. And it seems to control the X and Y jerk and the vibration compensation really helps out and stuff like that. So I just leave the speed settings alone. Support, if I ever enable supports, I just leave it on tree auto or normal auto, depending on the print. If it was something like this Pikachu, I would leave it probably at just normal because everything that it would need supports for is vertical. There's no horizontal, it doesn't need to go inside of anything. Now say this was an extremely large Pikachu and the mouth was actually hollow and I wanted supports in there, I would probably put it to tree so that way it can go up and inside without touching any of the print and having to print from like the inside of his mouth on the bottom to the top, which is what this setting would change. I only use supports if it touches the build plate. Now obviously there are certain STL files and models that you might need to turn this off because of just the way that the print is shaped, but for the most part this is what I keep it at. Now raft, this is a huge one for anybody having issues with build plate adhesion. If you find that your print just cannot cling to the bed or if it has issues with the Z offset and stuff like that, really you should be calibrating your printer, but this is another very helpful tool. Go ahead and put this up to two layers and keep this at 0.1. What this will do is print off two solid raft layers of filament before your print even starts. So it'll give it a strong base for the model to stick to before it starts going up. I use this especially if I'm printing off large prints like a helmet or anything like that where there's just a lot of room for error and it's a really long print and I don't want it to fail and I really don't care what the underneath of the print looks like because I'm going to mess with it later. I always turn on the RAF just in case but if not the build plate adhesion on the PEI sheet that it comes with is phenomenal and if you have your printer calibrated correctly you shouldn't even really need to mess with any of that everything else pretty much the same multi-material like i said for the third part of the video we're going to go in depth on the purging and flushing settings on the cobra 3 combo but for now in the slicer the settings that we can change is the prime tower if you enable it you will see that a little tower like this will pop up and it will clean the print head before it starts working on the next color. And I leave pretty much everything alone. I don't change any of the prime tower settings. If you're making a multicolored print, you're going to waste filament. It, it just happens. You don't have a Prusa XL and you're not spending $3,000 on one. So you're gonna waste a little bit of filament. It's fine, it's part of the printing hobby and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Now flush options, I always tick these two on just because it will work on the supports and the infill before I start working on the outer layer for a new color. Just so that way you ensure that any leftover residue from the last color does not bleed through the next one. 
And especially if you're working with blacks and reds like this Pikachu, you're definitely going to want to tick these two on just so that way you know that no colors are going to run into the yellow or the pink or anything like that. And then for others, this is pretty much just two different types of build plate adhesion things. The skirt, pretty much it'll just prime the print head around where the model is about to print. It doesn't really do too much. And for brim, I just leave this on auto. It'll put it if it needs it. If not, I won't put it. But pretty much this just puts a couple of lines around the base of the print. So that way it doesn't slide or go anywhere. And then you have the special modes and the G-code output. I would not mess with anything here unless you know what you're doing. If you don't know how G-code works and you're not really into tinkering with 3D printers and stuff like that, never touch this stuff. And the special modes, you can actually play with all these different types of printing modes and stuff like that. And you can even change the time lapse. I just realized this right now. Huh, you can actually make it smooth. <gasps> I didn't know you could do that. I'm gonna put that in this video, I think. That's so cool. I gotta try that. I just realized that there's a, there's a function to change from traditional to smooth. That's so cool. I'm gonna mess with that. Okay, so yeah, that is the overall slicer settings that I use for my Cobra 3 combo. And for the final part of the video, I'm going to be going over the multicolor settings, such as the purge and flush adjustments that you can make to make sure that you get better prints. Now this one, aside from the obvious massive change between the orange and the yellow, you can see that there is a lot of bleeding when it comes to the black PLA running into the orange and even on his body a little bit too there where there's the black stripes on his back. It looks absolutely horrible. And this is just from the standard settings that the Cobra 3 comes with. And then you have this one, and this is after I adjusted some of the purge settings on the printer itself, and it came out so much better. There's no bleeding whatsoever through the red, the yellow, the black, nothing. And let's go over what I did to get this quality real quick. So when you go to do a multicolored print on your Cobra 3 combo, whether you hit remote print or you start it from the printer itself or even on the app, doesn't matter. After you do that, you're gonna wanna walk over to your printer, click on the four rolls of filament tab, then click on the down arrow. And what this is gonna do is open up an option to change the purge amount. Go ahead and bump it up just a little bit. I found that the sweet spot for me is 1.2. will clean out any of the excess colors that you have, especially if you turn on the settings that I showed you in the slicer, like flushing it into the infill and the supports and also turning on a prime tower this will ensure that there is no leftover residue from any of the previous colors and this is how i was able to get a good looking face on the red hulk like this who has a varying color range from black to red to white to yellow and these colors do not bleed whatsoever and they usually do if you have it on the standard settings and even on a model like this where it has some silk and some regular pla and stuff like that there was no bleeding whatsoever on this entire model especially on the low Logo, that whole thing is one piece and as you can see there's white and brown and there's a silk orange and stuff like that and it came out really really good so making sure that you have those settings ticked on your slicer and then also adjusting that on your printer is an easy way to avoid any sort of bleeding through the multi-material prints now of course this is just what I have seen from my tests if you use different materials like pet G's and ABS's and stuff like that you might need to play with it a little bit do a couple of prints at 1.2 maybe you have to get it up to 1.4 you just have to play with it a little bit just to see where the sweet spot is you can go all the way up to 3.0 but this is going to spit out a ton of filament before it changes but you never know i mean they have it that high for a reason maybe you have to clean it out that much for very specific types of filament so it's just a matter of testing like everything else is in 3d printing so go ahead and just try it out and use whichever one works for you and those are the best settings for the Cobra 3 combo. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope I was able to help you guys out if you're having any issues with your settings on your Cobra 3. Let me know down below if any of these settings didn't work for you or if you have settings of your own that give you better quality prints than mine. There's a new community tab thing on YouTube. I'm not even sure if you guys are able to see it. It says that it's in a beta. It looks like we can almost have like a community chat on my channel now. So as long as you're subscribed to the channel, we can all have a discussion about the different settings and you guys can even show pictures and stuff like that. I'm not really sure how it works, but it seems like you're gonna be able to kind of like communicate with everybody who subscribed to the channel. So if you're not already, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that way you guys are able to keep up with all of the latest content that I put on this channel as well as talk in the community tab. And once again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.